Has anyone ever told you that your doctrine, belief is wrong because it was also believed by and they named some person they didn't like? That's called GBA, guilt by association. It's the easy way out. No thinking necessary. They just think of somebody they don't like that holds that view or something similar and call them bad and link the view with that person. It doesn't seem fair, does it? It doesn't seem right. Well, it's not right. We should be able to read our Bible ask simple questions, answer them, and let the view be checked by the Bible, not dismissed by GBA, guilt by association. I would like to ask, point out, and answer three simple questions on the end time. You may want to pause this video and write things down and check them for yourself. I promise you, it is worth it. Hi, I'm David Daniels from Chick Publications. Number one, if the Lord Jesus is not concerned with Israel, why is Jesus returning to Israel in the second coming? Acts 1, verses 9 to 12. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Verse 12. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day's journey. Compare that to Zechariah chapter 14, verses 3 to 4. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle, and his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the, the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west, and there shall be a very great valley. <clears throat> And half of the mountain shall remove toward the north, and half of it toward the south. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains. For the valley of the mountains shall re reach unto Azal. Yea, ye shall flee like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah king of Judah. And the Lord my God shall come and all the saints with thee. Jesus wanted us to understand this information so much that 400 years before he came to earth as a baby, he prophesied through Zechariah that he would touch down on the Mount of Olives. Then in Acts, we see Jesus ascend into heaven with the angels promising that he shall so return in like manner exactly parallel to what Zechariah 14 says. So it sounds like Israel is pretty important to Jesus. Number two, who is coming with Jesus when he returns? Look at the wife of Christ, that's us, in Revelation chapter 19, verses 7 to 8. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. 
And to her it was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Fine linen is the righteousness of saints. That's Christ's righteousness given to us as fine, clean, white linen. Now, look a few verses later. In verse 11, I saw heaven opened. Jesus is on a white horse. And who's behind Jesus? Revelation 19, verse 14. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. What is fine, white, clean linen? The righteousness of saints. So those aren't angels, are they? They're saints. The wife of Christ, wearing the linen of righteousness that Christ arrayed them in. Look at Jude 14. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. These agree with what we read in question one in Zechariah 14, 5. And the Lord my God shall come and all the saints with thee. Then if Jesus comes with his saints, that means they had to come to him sometime before that. It cannot be the first resurrection of Revelation 20 because it's Revelation 19, and that hasn't happened yet. And that brings us to the third question. If only the beheaded believers are in the first resurrection, where is everybody else? Revelation 20, verses 4 to 5. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them which were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years." But, verse 5, the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. The first resurrection is the beheaded believers who did not worship the beast or his image, didn't have the mark on his foreheads or his hands. It's very clear. It's also clear that the rest of the dead didn't rise until after the thousand years. So where are the rest of the dead? A few verses later, the rest of the dead are raised after the thousand years. After the devil is thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone. They are judged by their works. They come from the sea, death, and hell, according to verse 13. But wait, where are the other dead? Where are those who died in faith without receiving the promises? Hebrews chapter 11. Are they part of this judgment? They weren't raised in the first resurrection. Are they part of the rest of the dead who have to wait until after the thousand years to be judged by their works? No. God promised Daniel in the very last verse that he would be raised to stand in his lot. It's all gone after the thousand years, so it has to happen during the thousand years. Daniel 12, 13. But go thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. The lots are very carefully listed in Ezekiel 48. Daniel's is somewhere in the Judah portion. So that means Daniel has to be raised from the dead. But when? 
It cannot possibly be at the end of the tribulation. So that leaves some time before the end of the tribulation. Number one, Jesus is returning to the earth after the tribulation to Israel because Jesus is concerned with Israel. Two, Jesus is returning to the earth with the wife of Christ, arrayed in fine, clean, white linen on white horses after the tribulation. Three, that means Jesus has to bring his wife to himself before the end of the tribulation. Three simple points. This is not proof yet of what people call a pre-trib rapture, but it shows that the catching away cannot possibly be post-tribulation. If you'd like another video to hear a few reasons why I think the catching away to Jesus happens before the seven years, please let me know in the comment section. Until then, God bless you and have a wonderful day.